Hey guys, it's Bub here, and this video we're taking a look at Nano 10. In the past, we've taken a look at Tiny 10 and multiple versions of Nano 11, but it's come to my attention that we haven't really ever taken a look at a version of Nano 10. This ISO was recommended to me by a viewer in the comment section of my last video, so if you have any custom ISOs or any ideas of videos you want me to take a look at, please let me know down in the comments below because I love doing viewer recommended videos. With that being said, I'm excited to see what Nano 10 actually brings to the table, considering the fact that the ISO itself was a little over 4 gigabytes. To me, a 4 gigabyte ISO of Windows 10 is not very nano. But again, maybe I could be wrong, maybe the OS will be more compressed once it's actually installed. So let's go ahead and get into it. Here we are in the installer, we can see that they've opted to take out the purple background and the typical Windows setup for a black background. We can see that the colors are blue, Nano 10 looks kind of like a, some concepts of Windows 11 that I've seen in the past, this logo right here. Next, install now, that'll get us through the traditional Windows 10 installation. Um, should be asking us to select the EULA next. Yep, here is the EULA, confirm, advanced, 60 gig drive, and let's install Nano 10. All right, and here we are in the setup of Nano 10. So we can see that it is, seems to be just the basic Windows 10 out of box experience. Um, one thing that if you know if you watch this channel is that I love when these ISOs let you have an out of box experience. A lot of them just jump straight into the actual desktop and I just find that to be a little, I don't want to say inconvenient, but it's weird because you don't get that initial setup experience. Having the initial setup experience to me, even though it doesn't really matter, it helps it feel a little more clean. So we're just going to go ahead and name our account Windows and click Next. We won't set a password because we're obviously very cyber secure on this channel. And then we are going to click Accept, uh, just accept the default terms. One thing that obviously we noticed is that it skipped asking us to make a Microsoft account. It just allowed us to create a local account. So that is a customization that obviously comes in with Nano 10. And now we're going through the standard. This might take several minutes. We'll be back once Windows 10 is in the desktop. All right, and here we are on the desktop of Nano 10. The only thing I've went ahead and done off screen was I installed VMware Tools as I typically do just so we can get a better viewing experience. So here on the desktop, we can see that we have a custom made gray to dark blue wallpaper gradient with the Nano 10 logo that we saw in the setup screen. I actually do like this wallpaper. It could be a good like dark mode wallpaper. Um, up in the top left, we have our default icons, including the recycle bin, as well as post setup. And in this post setup folder, we have GitHub links. So I'm assuming this was uploaded to GitHub at some point. We have Copilot Edition Switcher that will let you install Edge and Copilot or remove Edge and Copilot. Um, that just describes what it is. And I noticed that this documentation even says Nano 11, so this must have just been a copied folder from Nano 11. We have install software, so we have a bunch of batch files that allow us to install things like Chrome, Chrome Beta, Firefox, Brave, Visual Studio Code, and all of these I believe are just WinGet commands. Yep, they are WinGet commands, so pretty cool nonetheless. Next up we have OS tweaks, so things like compression, if you wanted to even compress the disk even more than it already is, we'll take a look at that in a minute. Settings home page, uninstall edge, actually I'm curious about settings home page, because obviously this folder was copied over from Windows 11, just ripped right out of Windows 11. Windows 10 never had a settings like home page in the context that Windows 11 did. Um, so I'm very curious to know what this would even do. Because yes, while technically this could be considered the home page, it's not the same home page as Windows 11. So I don't know how that would even work. We even have the like Windows 11 context menu. Like this is so blatantly just copied and pasted out of Nano 11, it's like they didn't even go through and clean it up from what we had in the past. We then have enable and disable spotlight registry keys. Um, and that's, oh, we still have more. We have useful stuff like GitHub, Discord, YouTube. I wouldn't call that very useful. We then have a registry key that updates the OEM information. I'm not going to run that. And then a registry key that updates, pauses updates rather, until the year 3000. Pretty cool. Let's move down to our taskbar. We can see that it's been quite a while since I've seen a Windows 10 taskbar. I'm so used to Windows 11. We have on the very far right side our show desktop button. We then have our action center with notifications and our traditional action center settings here. We then have right here our calendar and clock. I do miss having the seconds on the clock in Windows 11. 
that's one thing I do wish that they would bring back. I then have our volume controls and our network settings, which are separate of each other in this build. And then we have our system tray, which we can see we have Windows Security, and it actually looks green for once. So I'm glad that Defender and Windows Security was included in this build. That's something that a lot of custom developers like to leave out because typically it breaks their operating system. But everything so far right now looks green, so it's running pretty well. We then have Bluetooth devices, safely remove hardware, and VMware tools. Over here on the right side, we have our desktop switcher, so we can switch between our different desktops. We have our search bar, and then we have our start menu. Taking a look at our start menu, we can see that it doesn't have any of the pinned apps, although if we wanted to, we could still pin apps, and right there, we have an app pinned. But we'll go back to how it was intended with our traditional just app view. Because this is Nano 10, we obviously are missing a ton of applications. All that we have installed by default are settings, traditional Windows accessories, Windows administrative tools, so again, nothing too crazy, Windows ease of access, Windows PowerShell, Windows security, and Windows system. That is all we have by default. We don't even get a web browser by default. You have to go into the post setup and run that script. So in terms of being minimalistic, this is very minimalistic. Let's go into Windows settings here and we can go see that this build is not activated. And if we go into system about, we can see that this is Windows 10 Enterprise LTSC 21H2 build 19044.5854. Pretty cool. So we are running an enterprise build. I was curious to see if this was like Windows 10 Pro, Enterprise, or even something like Home. Let's go ahead and go into our file explorer here where we can take a look and see that we're using 14 gigabytes of our drive and we have 45.3 gigabytes free of a 59.3 gig disk for a tiny version of windows 10 14 gigs is actually not that great um, we've seen other builds like tiny 10 get down even more than 14 gigs um, but i'm sure remember we have that compression script that we could run in here um, right somewhere in here right here that would probably compress this even more as for CPU and RAM usage, we can go ahead into our performance tab in Task Manager and see that I gave this VM 2 gigs and we're using 0.8 out of 2 gigs just idle on the desktop. And then for CPU, again, nothing too crazy, typical Windows CPU utilization, nothing too, too bad. Last thing I wanted to take a look at was if we go to update and security, not that, but update and security, we can see that Windows updates are paused until the year 3000. We do have the option to resume them but why would we do that? Because that could break the operating system. As we all know, Windows 10's end of life is coming up in October, so I'm not sure why you would even want to update because it's going to quit getting security updates. So with that being said, this is a brief overview of Nano 10. Thank you to the viewer who recommended this to me in the comments section of my last video. As I said in the beginning of this one, please let me know down in the comments below if you have any video ideas. I love doing viewer recommended video ideas. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, make sure to drop a like and subscribe if you're new around here as I do all kinds of different technology videos, including device restorations. With that being said, I'll see you all in the next one.